So in this example, you guys can see we have x plus 2 divided by x minus 4 divided by. Mr. McLogan? Yes. Could you please send Jake Swisher to the front office to check out, please? OK. Thank Just make you. sure you write down your homework, OK? And I'll put this online as well. So ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking at a problem like this, um, do you guys remember the problems that we wrote down last class period where I saw it was basic fractions, but we had like a variable in the denominator, right? You guys remember that? OK. So the main important thing, whenever you're solving, the main thing we got to do is get these variables off the denominator. So to do that, what we're going to want to do is multiply every single term by the LCD. So we have to figure out what the LCD is. Now, in our focus lessons, we practiced. Remember when we were adding and subtracting, right? With unlike denominators, we had to find the LCD. Or when we were doing complex fractions, um, basically what we did was multiply everything by the LCD, which is the same thing. So the first thing we want to do is factor anything that we can. Always factor. That's going to be simplifying this. So now you guys see x squared minus 1, I factored using difference of two squares as x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay. So now I need to find the polynomial that both x minus 1 and x plus 1 and x all divide into. Agreed? OK. So my LCD is going to be x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Do you guys agree with me that every single one of my denominators divides into that LCD? Yes? OK. So now, how do we use that LCD to help us solve? Well, if we multiply every single one of our terms by our LCD, we can use the division property to simplify. So what I simply do is just write it multiplication times every single term. All right, see ya. So let's see what happens using the division property. x divided by x, that divides out. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I'm an idiot. I wrote the wrong problem down. I'm sorry. Sorry about this. Hold on. Sorry. This problem was x squared minus x. Sorry. So therefore, this gets factored into x times x minus 1. Sorry. I don't want, I don't want to like over make this problem. I just realize I'm like, uh, this is going to be an issue. <laughs> We're going to have a cubic. And not like you couldn't do it, but that's just going to make this problem much more difficult. Um, so anyways, this gets factored down to x times x minus 1. Therefore, my LCD is x and x minus 1. Does that make sense? OK. So if I multiply everything times x, x times x minus 1, my x's divide out. Here, my x minus 1's divide out. And here, my x's and the x minus 1's divide out to 1. So therefore, now I'm left with an x minus 1 times x plus 2 minus 4 times x equals negative 2. Does everybody follow me? Anybody have any questions? Are we OK? I'm just waiting for questions. We're good. Kind of. Now, apply FOIL here. You get x squared plus x minus 2 minus 4x equals negative 2. I realize this is a quadratic, so I'm going to get all my terms onto the same side, right? So I'll add a 2, add a 2, and I get x squared, uh, let's see, minus 3x equals 0. Now, yes? Well, the x minus 1 is divided out, so that's x. Now remember, what am I doing with this LCD? I'm multiplying the LCDs, right? So that's really 4 times x. Okay. Is everybody following me so far? Anybody have any other questions? Now, yes? What is this called? We're just multiplying by the LCD. We're solving rational equations. That was. It's the same topic that I started with last class period, so that's why I didn't write it up there. Um, now, in this case, we don't really actually have to factor using a trinomial or quadratic formula. 
This one's actually not that bad. I can just factor out the x. When factor out an x, I'm left with x minus 3 equals 0. So I can say x minus 3 equals 0 and x equals 0. So my solutions in this case is 3 comma 0. However, when you're going back up to your problem, you've got to make sure you plug your answers back in. Because remember when we were graphing rational expressions, the first thing we did when graphing a rational expression is to do what? It's the first thing we do. Find the what? Vertical asymptotes, right? The points where the values are not a part of your domain. If you guys take your solutions and you plug them in and they make your denominator equal to 0, they're not a part of your domain. So you guys can see 0, when I plug 0 in, that makes that denominator and that denominator 0, right? So 0 is not in, is not actually a solution. And the mathematical word we call that is extraneous. Nope, so that would not be a solution. Because when you plug 0 back into your equation, it makes the denominator 0. You can't ever have your denominator equal to 0. So you always want to make sure you guys go back and check your answers. Okay.